You've probably heard that gratitude, even in small doses, can do wonders for your mental health. And it's true. What's more, we don't have to sit around waiting for gratitude to happen. We can actively create it in our brains and our bodies. Welcome back to Savvy Psychologist. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Wu. Every week, I'll help you meet life challenges with evidence based research, a sympathetic ear, and zero judgment. Today, we break down how gratitude works in the brain and walk through three simple tips for sprinkling more of this nourishing thing into your daily life. I realized the other day that it's been a while since I've watched Jimmy Fallon's thank you note segment. Have you seen him do this Friday bit? He writes a quick thank you card to random things like the Zoom cat lawyer or curbside pickup, AirPods, and even open back hospital gowns. It's hilarious. And you know what? Jimmy might be onto something. Even though he's doing this as a joke, there's actually a lot of neuroscience and psychology research saying that maybe you should write thank you notes too. And I know, these days, it can be really hard to find things to be grateful for. It seems that when crises and tragedies happen, they pile on in never-ending layers. When it rains, it pours, right? Or when it snows, it incapacitates much of the southern U.S. and all of Texas. So between extreme winter storms, vaccine anxieties, COVID parenting, employment uncertainties, not to mention ongoing entrenched systemic racism showing its cards everywhere. Many of us are feeling down and exhausted. But today, I want to take a leaf from Jimmy Fallon's book. It's time to write some thank you notes. Yes, I do mean literally sitting down and putting some grateful statements in writing instead of waiting for a grateful feeling to arrive. And that's because... When your brain is busy putting out fires all day, gratitude doesn't always get the attention it deserves. During stressful times, your mental space can look like a big dreary landscape, even though there are good things, even just tiny ones, under the surface just waiting to be recognized. So let's do something together. Let's take a moment and put some gratitude in writing. Take a sticky note, piece of paper, napkin, or even just the back of your hand, and fill in the blank. Thank you, insert thing, for being wonderful. Take your time. I'll wait. And by the way, you can fill that blank with anything, however big or small. You might be grateful for a loved one's health, the roof over your head, the coffee brewing in the pot, your dog's sweet puppy eyes, a never-ending supply of fascinating podcasts, or the coworker who complimented your DIY haircut during your Zoom meeting last week. Done? Okay, now take a slow breath and then read that gratitude statement again. Really let yourself feel that gratefulness. And guess what? This little moment of gratitude might have just given your brain a little bit of positive fuel. That's because gratitude is not just a feeling that happens to us. It's an activity that we generate in the brain. How does that work exactly? Well, first, let's talk about how gratitude makes you feel. Simply, it makes us feel better. There have been a bunch of studies showing this, including one that involved college students who had just signed up for counseling. In this study, some of them were asked to do just regular psychotherapy, some to do regular psychotherapy plus journaling, and some to do regular psychotherapy plus gratitude writing. It turns out that simply writing in a journal does not do the trick. But gratitude writing was associated with better mental health after just a month and also a three-month follow-up. In mental health care workers, too, gratitude writing also helps. And keep in mind, these are professionals who are exposed to other people's depression, trauma, and psychiatric symptoms all the time. So burnout is very common. But for them, journaling about what they're grateful for 
compared to journaling about hassles at work or not journaling at all, better protected these workers from depressive symptoms. And being grateful doesn't just make us feel better, it also makes us more generous towards others. So it makes us do better too. For example, when we receive a favor and then pay it forward, how much we do so depends on how grateful we feel towards the original person who helped us. So gratitude is kind of a multiplier of goodness. It makes us feel good, and that makes us more likely to do good in the world, and that makes someone else feel good, and hopefully so on and so forth. And this pay it forward effect might be because gratitude activates certain brain areas, specifically ones involved in thinking about moral questions and making sense of emotions. In this fascinating 2015 brain imaging study, researchers watched participants' brain area in real time as they imagined feeling gratitude. Specifically, participants were told stories of Holocaust survivors who recounted receiving life-saving help and feeling very strong gratitude about it. And imagine receiving help from strangers just like they did. The brain regions that were most activated were the anterior cingulate cortex and the medial prefrontal cortex, two regions associated with complex higher-order thinking, like making moral judgments or deciding what's important and making sense of emotions. So we can see that gratitude is a very powerful and complex experience in the brain. And what I think is even more fascinating is that gratitude has instantaneous effects on the body too. In one study, people actually rated a heat stimulation on their arm as less painful when they felt grateful for a stranger's help. And even if there isn't any pain or stress involved, cultivating a moment of gratitude can calm the body's autonomic system. A 2017 study in Nature's Science Reports found that a gratitude meditation of just five minutes compared to a resentment meditation decreases heart rate. This generally indicates a calmer body that is not activating the fight-or-flight stress response. And participants not only had their heart rate decrease, but their heart rate's fluctuations also started synchronizing with fluctuations in the resting functional connectivity of some brain regions. In neuroimaging jargon, resting functional connectivity just means the baseline level of different brain regions activating together. The researchers speculate that altogether, this means that the five-minute gratitude meditation is probably good for emotion regulation because it calms our bodies and puts important brain areas more in sync with one another specifically the areas in emotion-related networks. So, so far, gratitude is pretty fascinating, right? Well, we've seen how gratitude can make us feel better, do better, how it activates brain areas, puts them in sync with each other, and calms the body too. We've already talked about how gratitude is great for how we feel and how we do and brain activity, body functioning. Now, does this effect last? And the answer amazingly is that yes, gratitude effects are not just fleeting feelings. And in fact, a small gratitude exercise can have lasting effects for weeks or months. One study showed that writing a gratitude letter led to feelings of more gratitude, not only in the moment, but three months later in a totally unrelated circumstance. That original writing exercise was associated with having stronger brain activation in those gratitude-related brain areas that we talked about earlier many weeks later. So it certainly seems like a worthy investment. But there is one interesting twist to the story, and that's that the way we think about events can determine how much of a gratitude effect we get in the brain. In other words, how you interpret someone's generosity matters for how gratitude sits in your brain. In a truly creative experiment, 
participants were given mild pain from thermal stimulation, kind of like just being poked on the arm with something hot. When a stranger in another room helped ease their pain, either accidentally or on purpose, people reacted differently. So while this is happening, researchers are watching brain activity happening. Participants' ventral medial prefrontal cortex, a decision-making part of the brain that's associated with feeling gratitude, was most activated when the participant received intentional help. It was not nearly as activated when the help was accidental. Also, when the help was intentional, people perceived less pain. So this goes to show that we don't just reflexively feel grateful based on what good things happen to us. Instead, we play an active part in making sense of events and deciding whether to be grateful. And if we do feel that gratefulness, it has benefits for our bodies, moods, and even our behavior. So given what we know about gratitude's positive effects, why not invest in some homegrown gratitude? Adding some to your daily life is actually really easy. Here are my three tips for you. Tip number one is to keep a gratitude journal. No, no, no. Don't be intimidated by the idea of keeping a journal. You're not trying to publish anything here. You don't have to write anything polished or poetic. It's not the words that end up on the page that matter. It's simply taking a few minutes to help yourself focus on something that makes you grateful. Even a few sentences will do. Tip number two is to write thank you notes to people, just like Jimmy Fallon does. Only you're not joking. You actually mean it when you write these notes. Whether it's a sticky note for your roommate or an email to your coworker, just an out of the blue thank you for something nice they did or some positive vibe they provided would be really good. Make sure to give people the most generous interpretation possible. Even if someone might have made your day easier without meaning to, give them credit and say thanks. And tip number three, if you find yourself spiraling with resentment instead, reset and name one thing you're grateful for. It is not your fault that you spiral sometimes. That happens. The brain is designed to chase thoughts down anxiety-inducing or anger-inducing rabbit holes. But when you catch yourself, it's not too late to reverse course. Splash some cold water on your face, make a cup of tea, and force yourself to name one thing that you're grateful for, no matter how big or small. Then think really hard about that thing for a few minutes repeatedly bringing your mind back to it over and over, even if it tries to wander back to resentment. And it's okay if it takes some effort. It's okay if it takes a few times of gently wrangling your mind back. And it's okay if it takes some effort. It's okay if you have to try a few times to get your mind back to the gratitude. You don't have to do it perfect each time. It's just the practice that matters. And that's it. That's gratitude, your pocket-sized brain booster, and it's available anytime, anywhere, for free. Now, if you'll excuse me, Jimmy Fallon and I are going to go write some more thank you notes, starting with, thank you, savvy psychologist listeners, for continuing to listen to this podcast and providing such helpful and encouraging feedback. You're the best. So tell me what you're grateful for. Let me know on social media. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at QDT Savvy Psych, also at Jade Wu PhD. In fact, I'm thinking about starting a new Twitter series called Friday Gratefulness, or maybe Gratitude Fridays. What do you think? Let me know. We can also keep in touch through the Savvy Psychologist newsletter, where I deliver psychology tips and updates straight to your inbox. Savvy Psychologist is audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg and edited by Karen Hertzberg. As always, Savvy Psychologist is strictly for informational purposes and does not substitute for mental health care from a licensed professional. Thank you so much for joining me again, and I'll see you next week for a happier, healthier mind. <laughs>